Here's where the U.S. supports Israel no matter what. The U.S.-Israel relationship is unlike any other relationship the U.S. has. Israel is by far the biggest recipient of U.S. foreign aid in the world. Despite constituting about 0.01% of the world population, they've received 30% of all U.S. foreign aid since World War II. They get about $4 billion every year and have received almost $300 billion since 1945 when you adjust for inflation, which is enough money to end world hunger. But what's more shocking is that this support is unconditional. It goes through every year basically unanimously. Even right now, when we see Israel committing atrocity after atrocity and the entire world condemning the massacre of Gaza, the US government is actually trying to send more money to Israel. The US ruling class also gives unconditional diplomatic cover for Israel. Despite repeated attempts by the international community to prosecute Israel for its violations of international law, they can't. Why? Because the United States always comes in to protect Israel. For example, during Israel's 2014 massacre of Gaza, the United Nations Human Rights Council voted on a resolution to denounce Israel's massacre. Of the 38 countries on the council, the United States was the only country to vote no. The U.S. is almost always one of a handful of countries that votes against U.N. resolutions condemning Israel, while the rest of the world overwhelmingly votes the other way. So why does the U.S. do this? Well, the crux of it is that the U.S. is an empire. It has over a thousand military bases littered all around the world, military units that can invade any corner of the globe in a matter of hours. Its goal, like every other empire in history, is to control the world's resources and markets and force its will on the entire world. The Middle East is especially important to any empire because that's where so much oil and global trade passes through. Israel is essentially America's attack dog in the Middle East. Any job that the U.S. can't do, or would look too imperialistic to do, Israel carries out on its behalf. Israel has played a crucial role in attacking and destabilizing independent Arab governments determined to defy U.S. dictates. In 1967, Israel attacked two such governments in Syria and Egypt in a surprise invasion. Israel's narrative has always been that they launched a preemptive strike to prevent an impending Arab genocide of Jews, but in reality, Israel just wanted to take Arab land. Matthew Peled, one of Israel's commanders in the Six Day War, told the Israeli newspaper Haaretz, the thesis that the danger of genocide was hanging over us in June 1967 and that Israel was fighting for its physical existence is only a bluff which was born and developed after the war. This invasion was crucial at a time when 550,000 American troops were bogged down in Vietnam fighting the spread of socialism there. The Library of Congress study of the Israeli war recounted, quote, the traumatic defeat of the Syrians and Egyptians in the June 1967 war with Israel discredited the radical socialist regimes of Nasser's Egypt and Ba'athist Syria. The defeat strengthened the hands of the moderates and the rightists. In 1981, Israel bombed an Iraqi nuclear power plant with U.S. approval at a time when the U.S. was publicly supporting Iraq in the Iran-Iraq war. Secretly, the U.S. wanted both governments to destroy each other, but couldn't be seen as playing such an intentionally destabilizing role. In 1982, Israel invaded Lebanon with the full support and funding from the United States in an attempt to crush the Palestinian resistance there and appoint an ultra-right-wing Lebanese phalangist as president. The U.S. would end up sending Marines in to aid this effort, only to be defeated by the Lebanese resistance forces. Israel also has a long history of doing the empire's bidding outside of the Middle East. Israel continued to arm and support apartheid South Africa even after it became too unpopular for the U.S. to do so. Israel even built an electrified fence around Namibia, then a South African colony, to protect it from neighboring Angolan liberation forces. Israeli police helped train torturers in the U.S.-backed Pinochet dictatorship in Chile. They trained the right-wing Guatemalan army that was committing genocide against indigenous people. Israel has also been a loyal partner in the U.S. war on terror. The Islamophobic hysteria following 9-11 gave the U.S. an excuse to attack any country that stood against its interest in the region, especially Iran. While the U.S. has been careful not to directly strike Iran, Israel has served a very useful purpose by continuing to bully and harass Iran, assassinating its nuclear scientists, seizing Iranian ships, and providing intelligence on Iran through massive spy networks. Israel also routinely bombed Syria, a country the U.S. attempted to topple in 2011. Just by being there, Israel gives the U.S. a constant excuse to intervene in the region under the guise of protecting Israel. As Joe Biden once put it, Were there not an Israel, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interest in the region. 
Israel is so central to the function of the empire that any kind of willing departure from Israel by the US ruling class is basically out of the question. While many people understandably feel pessimistic about liberating Palestine, while Israel is supported by such a tremendous superpower, consider this. Public support for Israel has rapidly declined in the US in the last few years. Americans are starting to see what their tax dollars are paying for, and they're standing up and saying, not in our name. There's a growing divide between the politicians who staunchly support Israel and their constituents who see Israel for what it is. If this divide continues to grow, it could fundamentally break people's confidence in these politicians and lead to a larger breakdown in the legitimacy of the political system. And the same could be said about any anti-imperialist struggle. Whether it's the struggle to end the murderous and archaic blockade on Cuba, the struggle to end the murderous and archaic sanctions regimes against Venezuela, Iran, or Korea, or the struggle to end the siege on Gaza, the entire world is fed up with US hegemony and world policing. If these movements link arms and see themselves as one common struggle, no force on earth can stop them.